If you have a Bible, you're going to want to turn into uh, John, John chapter 16. <clears throat> We're going to be reading in verse, verses 1 through, 1 through 15 in just a second. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. First, those are the first four books in the New Testament. So if you, um, if you were to take out your phone right now and, and Google the term self-help, you would, uh, you'd, you'd get over about 647 million results on the topic of self-help. Uh, the self-help industry uh, is an, an $11 billion industry in the United States alone. Okay, sounds like we need a lot of help. <laughs> But it's an $11 billion industry. There's, there was an ABC uh, News article written back in May, and it was entitled, If You Want to Get Rich, Write a Self-Help Book. And, and here's, a, here's a quote from, from someone who's kind of in the, in the self-help world that pretty much kind of sums up the foundation of self-help, and it's that we alone have the power within us to solve our problems, relieve our anxieties and pain, heal our illnesses, improve our golf game, or get a promotion. That golf game is a really important thing you need to note there. So the basic assumption of self-help really is, is that you're not quite good enough. I mean, you, you, could, you could be better. You could be better. You could be, you could be thinner. You could be smarter. You could be wealthier. You could be uh, su- more successful. You could have more friends. You could be more influential. You could, you could be more. And now, I, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with improvement. We, we always want to be improving ourselves. But what I struggle with is a world that, that is bought into this lie that says, you're not good enough. Now, it, it's, it's one thing to say, I want to improve. But it's, it's completely an, another thing and an unhealthy thing to say, I'm not good enough. And my response to someone who would say that, that I'm not good enough is, is, says who? Says who? Who said you're not good enough? What, and what are you comparing yourself to? Who sets the standard for what's good enough? What, what is good enough? And, and how will you know when you get there? And, and what happens then if, if the standard changes? You see, happiness or satisfaction that's based on some Arbitrary measure is, is happiness and satisfaction that really is, is only temporary. And this self-help thing, is, it's, it's not just this, you know, the whole I'm not good enough. It's not just a problem out there, but it's, it's a problem in here. This is an issue that a lot of people face in the church. So many followers of Christ have bought into this lie that says that we are not good enough. And they tend to dismiss their abilities, their talents, and their gifts. They discount themselves and thereby assume that they cannot bring any value or bring any impact to our world. And some of this, some of this is just we, we, we're lazy and, and we're comfortable and we don't want to step out in faith. But, but there are a lot of people where it's not really a comfort issue, but it's a, it's a confidence issue. And when our confidence is in ourselves... And, and, and then when you pin your hopes on something that you're not already confident in, which is yourself, then you naturally are just assume that you're going to fail, so you don't try. And the, the title of this morning's message, as you can see on the screens, is Empowered. And I think that that's, that's a great, great word. And the dictionary defines empowered. It has several different phrases. It says to give power or to give authority, to, to authorize, to to enable. And, and empowered, it is a powerful word. And as a follower of Christ, you need to know this. You need to know that you are empowered by God. That means that God has given you, has given you his followers, all of us, he's given us power. He's given us authority. He's, he's authorized us to do his will, and he's enabled us to do what God wants us to do. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, God inhabits us and he gives us the ability to do the things that he's commanded us to do. And what has he asked us to do? What has he empowered us to do? Well, thank you for asking that question. Here, here, I I want you to see this. This is gonna be on the screens. The Holy Spirit is given to believers so that they are empowered to live the Christ, live the life Christ commanded, to love the world with the love Christ modeled, 
and to lead others to the new life Christ made possible. That right there is what you've been empowered to do, to live, to love, and to lead. Empowered to live like Christ, love like Christ, and lead others to Christ. And that's a pretty awesome task. And I know what some of you are already thinking, and it's this phrase, I can't do that. I can't do that. And I would tell you, I would tell you in the most um, loving and kind, caring and compassionate way that I can, you're wrong. You, you are so wrong. If you are a follower of Christ, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And if you have the Holy Spirit in you, then you have the power to do exactly what God is asking you to do. Now, you may choose not to do it, but you cannot say, I, I can't. Uh, I won't is different than I can't. And some of you may be saying, Jimmy, I, I really, I, but you don't understand. I really can't. I want to, but I can't. And what I would ask you this morning is, who, who told you that? Because that is not from God. I can't is not from God. It didn't come from him. And the scary thing for a lot of us is that's what we start to tell ourselves. We start to tell ourselves that we can't. And if we tell ourselves that long enough that we can't, guess what? We start to believe that we can't. And then the next step to starting, when we tell ourselves that and we believe that, then the last part of that treacherous journey is that we start to say we can't and live like we can't. There's a lot of believers who are living in the I can't world, but I want, I want you to hear me today when I tell you that as a believer in Christ, through the Holy Spirit, you can do it. Now, now please don't, don't mistake this for, for a self-help seminar. That's not what this is. So this is not self-help at all. What we need is, is God's help through the Holy Spirit, and it gives us the power to live for Christ. And so I want to read about the Holy Spirit this morning in John chapter 16. We're going to read the first 15 verses together. <clears throat> it says, I have told you these things. This is Jesus talking. Jesus is, he's, he's been in this conversation with his disciples. It started in the upper room when they had the last supper together. And he's on his way to the cross. He's about to, he's about to be arrested. He's about to go through that whole ordeal. And he's been having this long conversation with him, which in our Bibles is recorded in chapters, but it's just one long conversation. So he's, this chapter 16 is kind of the end of that conversation. In chapter 16, here we go, verse 1. I've told you these things to keep you from stumbling. They will ban you from the synagogues. In fact, a time is coming when, when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. They will do these things because they haven't known the Father or me. But I have told you these things so that when their, when their time comes, you will remember I told them to you. I didn't tell you these things from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going away to him who sent me. And not one of you asked me, where are you going? Yet because I have spoken these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. So Jesus is getting the fact. He, he understands that the things that he's been telling them, this is starting to weigh pretty heavy on them. And they're really starting to kind of freak out. But he says, nevertheless, and that's, that's an important word, nevertheless. So he says, I know, you're, I, I know you're scared. I know you're freaking out. I know this doesn't make sense. But he says, nevertheless, I'm telling you the truth. It is for your benefit that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the counselor will not come to you. If I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world about sin, righteousness, and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I'm going to the Father, and you will no longer see me. And about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. Verse 12, I still have many things to tell you, but you can't bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything the Father has is mine. This is why I told you that he takes from what is mine and he will declare it to you. 
So, as I said earlier, Jesus is, he's, this is this long conversation that he's having with his disciples, and he, he, he understands that, that what's going on is, is weighing heavy on them, and he's wanting them to know that it will be okay, and it's, it's going to be okay, it's, it's okay if he goes, because when he goes, the Holy Spirit, the, the counselor, will come, and it will be better for them. But they're, they're not quite sure. They're, they're not quite understanding it. There's, their whole world really is about to change. And I think some of them are starting to fall into the trap of, I can't. We can't. Jesus, we can't bear this if you go. We can't manage this if you go. Jesus, if you die, what are we going to do? We can't. But in these verses, we see that Jesus is reminding the disciples, and he's reminding us that we are empowered. Say that with me. Just say, I am empowered. I am empowered. Yeah. <laughs> it does kind of sound like a self-help seminar. You can do anything. No, that's not. There's, my products are right out there. No, it's not that. But it, again, it's this whole idea of that God empowers us. And here's, here's the first thing I want to share with you. Three quick things. Number one is we're empowered to live. In other words, we, we're going to finish what we've started. We'll finish what we've started. Um, what we saw in those first three verses in, in, in chapter 16 that, that things, things were going to get rough for the disciples. They're about to face a bunch of persecution. They were going to go through things. They, they were going to even some of them lose their lives. They were, they were fixing to be right in the middle of a bunch of quote unquote, I can't do this situations. Jesus is telling them that they're going to face it. And it was true for the disciples. And it's also true for us. We're going to go through difficult times. We're going to go through struggles. We're going to go where life isn't happening the way that we want it to happen or, or things aren't working out the way that we want them to work out. It's going to happen for us. And here's, here's when we face persecution, when we face trials or struggles, the, the greatest danger that, that we face in those times when it gets difficult is when we face those I can't moments is falling away. In other words, just, just quitting. And not doing what God has called us to do. And basically when that happens, we, we're pretty much deciding that this temporary life is, is more valuable to us than Jesus. And his eternal plan and his eternal life for us. But Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will give us exactly what we need to get through what we're going through. Acts 20, 24 says, But I consider my life of no value to myself. My purpose is to finish my course in the ministry I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of God's grace. You see, when, 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 when Paul understood what he understood in, in these, because he faced a lot of I can't moments where, where in our earthly minds and just in the way that we see things, he faced a lot of those moments. But he, when he was in those moments, he wasn't worried about himself. His main concern was to accomplish the task that God had given him. And so you, you say, how could that be his focus? How, how am I in the middle of I can't moments? How, how am I supposed to focus on the plan of God? Because here's, here's how it, what Paul knows, and, and here's what we need to know. He knew that he was empowered by God to do the mission of God. You don't really get preoccupied with I can't when you understand it's not you, but it's Christ in you. Life becomes a whole lot more manageable. I'm not going to say easy because life is not easy, but it becomes more manageable when you realize that it's not, it's not up to you. It's not up to your own power. It's not up to your own strengths. It's not up to you. You see, I, I, can, I can share my faith with someone because even though it, it scares me half to death, I can do it. Because God is, is working through me. The, 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 pressure, the pressure's off. I, I can volunteer in a ministry here at, at, at the church that I'm not sure I would be you know, that good at, but I can do it because God's working through me. The, the pressure is off. I can say no to things that I know that, that, are, that are hurting me, that are distracting me from the mission of God because uh, I have the power because it's God working through me. The, pre, the pressure's off. I'm okay, not because I'm good, but because I serve a good God who is working in me. So when I face things that challenge me, that may seem overwhelming to me, that, that want to defeat me, I can remember that I'm, I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit 
And so I can keep going. Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3, and, and this is such a, this is a great um, passage about just being connected to the Lord. It says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Now, do you get why whatever they do prospers? It's not because they're good. It's not because they're awesome. It's not because that they, 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 are, they have these amazing talents and abilities, but it, everything that they do prospers. It's because they're rooted in God. They delight themselves in God. When you delight yourself in the Lord, then that, what that means is, is that your focus, your, your attention is, is in Christ. You're finding total satisfaction in Him. And so when, when your total satisfaction is in God, then you're not, you're not worried about other stuff. You're not living in I can't moments, but you're living in empowered moments because it's Christ working in you and through you. You see, when you delight in the Lord, it leads to peace in the midst of chaos. When we delight in ourselves, it leads to problems. We're empowered by God to finish what we've started through him. The second thing I tell you is we're empowered, we're empowered to love, to do what was once unthinkable. <clears throat> if you go back to verse 7, he tells his disciples that it's, this, it's better for him to go away. And, and, and how is that better? I, and and I'm, I'm sure that's what the disciples were thinking. Is like, Jesus, you're with us. We can see you. We can touch you. We can, we can hear your voice. We, we, we're with you. How is that better? How is it better for you that if, for us, if you get arrested? How is it better for us if you're beaten? How is it better for us if you're crucified? How, how is that better? How is it possible? But Jesus says that if I don't go, the counselor, the Holy Spirit won't come. He can't come. And what the disciples didn't really realize at that moment, I mean, we, we can look back and go, well, duh. But in that moment, what they don't understand was that their access to Jesus was limited to them being in his physical presence. With the Spirit coming, it meant that Jesus was going to be with them all of the time. And it means that Jesus, the Holy Spirit in us, Jesus in us, we have access to Jesus at all times and in all places. The Holy Spirit, the, the, with Him with us, it's not like we have to go run and find Jesus somewhere and go, is this, is this, is this okay? Is, is this, I, I need your help here. No, we, we have the power through the Holy Spirit that Jesus is in us to do what he's, He wants us to do, to accomplish the things that He's asked us to accomplish. And we're able to do things that we never ever thought that we could do before. We're doing things that were unthinkable. Jesus, is, Jesus His death and His resurrection, it, it made us right with God, but it's the Spirit, Spirit's work in us that helps us to live out what God commands and it's the Spirit's work in us that empowers us to love people that we, we would have never thought that we could love. Love those who hate you. Love those who persecute you. Love those who disagree with you. Love those who are different than you. Love those who the world might say, and if we're honest, sometimes we might say, are unlovable. John 6, 63 says, The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. You see, human effort accomplishes nothing. So if we're, we're trying to love the way God wants us to love and we're trying to do it on our own, guess what? We're going to be big old failures. But it's not us doing the unthinkable. It's Christ doing the unthinkable, the, the, the unreachable, the, the impossible through us. It's, it's easy to get in, you know, it's, it's the spirit that gives us eternal life and it's the spirit that empowers us to really run to a lost world and, and, and share with the lost world the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
And it, and it is. It's easy to get. It's easy to get busy. It's easy to get distracted. Um, it's easy to get. Um, to, it's easy to kind of preoccupy yourself with Bible study and completely miss the whole, the whole obedience part. And, and, and I get it. I get it because we want to. We kind of want to stay safe. We kind of just want to huddle up. We want to stay comfortable. We want to. We want to kind of for lack of a better term, swim in the shallow end of the pool because in the shallow end of the pool, I can always, I can stand up. I'm not going to get to the point where, you know, it might get a little dicey for me. I understand because honestly, um, just a little let you into my heart, I want to be there too sometimes. I want to be where it's easy. I want to be where it's comfortable. I want to be where I'm in control while I'm in charge. But we can't, listen to this, we can't say we love Jesus and then not do what he's called us to do. We can't say we love Jesus and not love all the people that he created. We can't say we love Jesus and we're not willing to, to share the love of Jesus. But that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Remember, because we're empowered. We're empowered. We're not caught up in, or we're not stuck in, I can't. When we live as empowered people, then we start to live in ways that we never thought possible. We reach out to, to a neighbor who before now we've never said two words to. We share a part of our, our story where we're, we become vulnerable and, and allow God to use our story to maybe minister to someone who's living a similar story. We say nay, nay we say nay, no to things that really don't matter and, and, and we start filling our calendar, start filling our priority list with things that, that really have a kingdom impact. And we stop saying no to ministry opportunities and say yes even though we don't feel like it's, it's our, our strong suit. We start, we start to love the very things that Jesus loved. And when we love what Jesus loved and live as empowered people, then we start to see God at work, at work in us, and we start to see him working through us. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, of love, and sound judgment. And I think we, <clears throat> we would all say, you know what? We want to see Jesus. The disciples were lucky because they got to be with him. They got to see him face to face. They got to hear him. But remember what he told the disciples. It is better for you that I go away. And you know what? One day we will see Jesus. As followers of Christ, we, we have that hope that we'll see him in heaven. He's but for now, he's given us himself through the Holy Spirit so we can live and love now like, we've been living, like we will be living and loving in heaven. His will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that happens when we start living in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the last thing there, number three, is I would share you that we are, we are empowered to lead. And that means that we're to point people to the truth where the world says there is no absolute truth. We're empowered to lead and point people to the truth, the truth, where the world says there is no absolute truth. In verse 13, Jesus tells us exactly what the Holy Spirit's going to tell us. He will guide us into all truth. And we can trust that truth because it is God's truth. And let me tell you this, and, and just so you'll know, the Holy Spirit will never lead you or me to anything that is contrary to the Word of God. Well, you know, I'm not sure about that, or, you know, things, things have changed, things are different, you know, and we, we get caught up in this thing. But, but what I, I want you to be clear is that the Holy Spirit speaks what he hears from God. He doesn't speak his own words, but he, he, he speaks the Father's words. And he speaks his word, and he will never lead us contrary to what the Bible says. <clears throat> we have the truth, and the Spirit empowers us to speak truth into a world that pretty much does what it wants to do. And I think one of the reasons um, our, our country is in the mess that it, it's in is, is not because of a, of a political party, and it's not because of the, the quote-unquote culture out there. And I, and I know those things have a part of it. But I think one of the biggest issues facing our country today is believers in Christ have stopped living and speaking truth. 
When we go silent, when we go silent as believers, guess what? There's a world out there that is willing and ready to take up the torch and run with it and tell people to follow it. But unfortunately, where they're going is going to take them away from God. We've been empowered to point people to the truth. But let me, let me be clear here, too. We've not been empowered to be jerks. We've not been empowered to be insensitive. We've not been empowered to, to go out there and just rain on everybody's parade. It's hard, it's hard to point people to Christ. It's hard to point people to Christ's love when we're, not, when we're too busy hating on them. And so we have to be filled with truth and what? Love. That's the part a lot of us miss. We want to be truth. Mm, I got a truth for you. I'm fixing to bring the truth hammer and it's going to hurt. I'm going to jump from the top rope. I'm going to WWE you with the truth. Here it comes. Do you know what that does? That just pushes people away. You want to push somebody away from God? Just give them all the truth all day long. But if you want to bring people to Christ, then give them truth that's wrapped up in love. We're called to be people of truth. We're called to be people of love. But it doesn't mean we can't use our, our lives and use our words to point people to the way the truth, and the life. John 14, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. You see, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we, we can fall into the trap of going where the winds of culture will want to take us. But we have to be firmly rooted in the truth of God, and that's what the Holy Spirit does. It reminds us of God's Word. It reminds us of the truth of God. It's that tug in your heart that when you, you know something is not right, you, you can tell that this is not what God wants from you. Don't ignore that. That's the Holy Spirit in you saying, go this way. Trust God. Trust His truth. Romans 8, 5 says, Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. And this is why, as believers, we, we cannot live in I can't. Because there's a world out there that's living the way that it wants to live. It's living according to the flesh. And guess what? That's, that's what they're going to do because that's, that's where they are. They're, they're, they're living to gratify the flesh. But what we have to do is we have to live according to the Spirit, according to how God has called us to live. And we have to tell the world that there is another way, that there is a better way, that there is a right way. But not only do we have to tell them that, we have to live that way too. We've been empowered by the Holy Spirit to lead others to God. Empowered to live Empowered to love, empowered to lead. And here's what I want you to hear tonight, tonight, this morning. If you're a follower of Christ, okay, if you're a follower of Christ, because I know some of you are still, you've, you've heard this and you're still arguing with me in your head. You're still saying, I can't, I can't. But let me just tell you this. If you're a follower of Christ, you can. You are not the exception. But I guarantee you some of you are thinking that, oh, I'm the, I'm the exception. I can't because, and you're going to list a whole litany of stuff there. You're going to just tell a whole bunch of stuff. But Jesus says, as my follower, you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. So let's start living like Holy Spirit-filled people. Let's start living, loving, and leading like Christ. And you know what? Let's start it now because we are empowered.